This is a place for planting, for digging, for harvesting, for relaxing. It's a place to get your hands dirty, but most of all, it's about having fun. And that's what you'll always have when you're in the garden with Doug Oster. You want a green thumb too, don't you? Boy, did we luck out on weather for December for planting today. Now, didn't some guy tell us just a couple weeks ago it was the last planting? Well, I came across some garlic and some tulip bulbs cheap, and I've got a bed open, so that's gonna be our first job of the day. And we've got some other things we're gonna be using the straw for too. Well, here's our garden bed. I got this from Construction Junction a few years ago, and I love planting it. And I am going to mix some garlic and some tulips. Oh, that's the size of a tulip bulb. This is a variety called Mary Ann. And we're just gonna do garlic, tulip, garlic, tulip. And when they come up, tulips will be blooming. They'll go away and the garlic will take over. So let's just start with our power planter auger here. Just make kind of a row here. That looks good. Garlic clove, tulip bulb. Garlic clove, <laughs> tulip bulb. And it will continue. Look at the size of this one. Bigger clove means a bigger bulb. All right, we got a lot of this stuff planted. This is great. Now, next up, we're gonna put a little bit of straw on this bed to mulch it, and then we've got a great winter job. We're gonna protect a fig tree, so hopefully we get figs next year. Now yeah, we're putting down maybe four, six inches, and it'll mat down over the winter but it just acts as a, a blanket for the bulbs underneath. Not that they need it today, but you know the cold's coming. That's gonna be some flower bed. This is one of the things I love about garlic, how resilient it is. Last year I had garlic in here, one little clove, or actually a couple little cloves got left behind, and it's sprouting on its own right now, which is great because the greens are quite a treat, and usually for savoring in the spring, but mm. That's good. All right, let's get to that fig tree. Mm. This is a fig called Chicago Hardy, and even though it's hardy in our area, it still needs protection. Now, you'll talk to 100 different people that grow figs, and each one has a different way to overwinter it. This is the way that I like to do it. So what we're gonna do is first we're gonna tie this up so it becomes more of a column. The branches are very supple, and so we're gonna bring them together on the lower end of the tree, or actually bush, there we go. Oh, that's exactly what I want to do right there. And we'll tie this up. And then after that, we're gonna surround it with something to hopefully keep it warm. That's, that's I think, all we're gonna need right there. Nice. Next step is to surround it, and I'm using landscape fabric. You could use burlap, people use tarps. They use all sorts of stuff. I have this left over from another project, and so I'm just gonna surround the plant with this landscape fabric, which again is gonna kinda act like a blanket, and get it down where we want it. And we'll have another step after this. I'm gonna tie this up, and then we're gonna give it even some more insulation, and hopefully next fall I'll be eating beautiful purple figs. All right, I put a second layer of landscape fabric around here just because I had it. And again, we want to leave a little air in here and that acts as an insulator. Now, how does that look? I think that's kind of nice. Cinched at the waist is beautiful, gives you a thinning effect. And I think you're gonna love to be out here during the winter. All right, I'm just gonna grab a tomato cage. Watch yourself there, Maxie. And put it right over the fig. And then we're gonna fill this up with straw, use the rest of our straw up, and that'll be a great insulation for it. All right. All right, last batch of straw. 
and let there be figs. <laughs> Hopefully, we want our figs. All right, we got one more job to do in the garden. It's gonna make our spring chores a little bit easier, I hope. Looks good. If you're like me and you're looking for garden jobs this time of the year and wanna be out here, and I do, edging is a great one. Nothing makes a garden look better than putting an edge between the lawn and where the garden's supposed to be. Now this area here has been edged for, I don't know how many years, as long as the bed's been here, so it's easy to do. If you're starting from scratch and you wanna make an edge between a lawn and a garden bed, just run some garden hose along there where you want it, put some stakes there, and then we take our old-fashioned moon edger, and this was my grandfather's, and we start edging, and that's all there is to it. We're gonna turn this into this, and that looks a heck of a lot better. All right, let's finish up. What do you think about it, Max, huh? It's a good edge. Now I just go through one more time and just kind of clean it up, make sure it looks right. It's December and we still have flowers blooming. Uh, these are pansies and I'm expecting more blooms if the weather stays like this. Now check me out online, that's where you can find lots of other blog posts, garden stories, videos, pictures, and also that's where you can become part of Everybody Gardens, my subscription service. Until next time, I'm going to be planting bulbs like crazy and I'm going to continue planting bulbs until the ground freezes. You should too. We'll see you then.